Welcome to an all-new episode of Animal of the Week. In today's video, we are taking a look at the relatively newly discovered species of slug. Well, actually, they're not quite slugs. The Bornean ninja slug, despite having slug in the name, is only classed as a semi-slug. A semi-slug is a type of gastropod that falls between snails and slugs. They possess very small shells that are too small to be fully retracted into and are covered by the slug's skin. Anyway, other than that, there is another very unique thing that makes this slug worthy of a spot in Animal of the Week. However, you'll have to wait until we get to the section on breeding to find out. The ninja slug is a very new species, as I said, and so it has not been well studied yet. It was first discovered between 2007 and 2010 as part of a WWF project in Borneo between Brunei, Malaysia and Indonesia to document and discover more species on the island and to increase cooperation between these three countries in the conservation of the Bornean rainforest. The slug has been properly classified, with the scientific name being Ibicus rachelae, making it a member of the family Helicarionidae. The reason for the grouping is that members of this family may make use of the same mysterious breeding technique that I won't reveal until the section of the video. The name kind of gives it away. The Bornean ninja slug was discovered in Borneo in the jungle in the Malaysian state of Sabah at an altitude of 1,900 meters on the underside of leaves. Interestingly, snails and slugs, and well, semi-slugs, are quite rare and do quite badly in Borneo and jungles in general because of how acidic jungle soil is due to the leaching that occurs from the huge amounts of rainfall erosion in these environments and the leaching done by trees taking up what little is left in the soil, leaving acidic, very poor, not nutritious soil behind. This is undoubtedly why these slugs are found in trees on the undersides of leaves because the jungle floor would prove too hard for them to live on. Well, they are semi-slugs, and so, like snails and normal slugs, a huge pest to plants and eat their leaves, causing damage to them. In the jungles of Borneo, they certainly will have a huge array of options when it comes to what leaves to eat. In jungle ecosystems, most nutrients are held within the trees, and therefore the slugs must climb up the trees to eat their leaves or face starvation on the jungle floor where very little grows. Now the big reveal of what makes these semi-slugs so amazing and why they're actually named ninja slugs, because the Bornean bit is rather obvious. The reason for being ninjas is because they're able to shoot what has become known as love darts at their mates in order to fill them full of hormones and increase their chances of getting lucky, like how a ninja may fire a poison dart at their target. Now if this sounds kind of messed up, it's because it is, but for the semi-slugs, it gives them a huge reproductive advantage. It contains a pheromone-like compound called alimone, which encourages sperm preservation in the target. The dart is made of calcium carbonate and literally pierces the epidermis like an arrow. Now you may be imagining these arrow-like objects flying through the air, it's more like a shanking really. They do not contain the sperm and so are not part of the fertilization itself. Other than the love darts, these slugs do have a few other adaptations. Their tails are incredibly long compared to their heads, and they have been observed to use them in a similar way to cats curling up with them. This behaviour was observed to be so prevalent that the species was almost named Ibicus felis as a nod to cats, however it was changed to Rachelay, meaning Rachel, because that was the name of one of the scientists who discovered its girlfriend, which is very sweet but I prefer the cat thing. The reason for this observed behaviour isn't really understood, but it seems likely that it could be a form of defensive measure to make the semi-slug feel better protected and bulkier, especially as this behaviour was observed a lot when humans approach the slug, so it's very likely to be some sort of defensive display. I could be wrong though. Like I said, it's a very new species, so we don't really know how many there are or their population patterns. We also don't know what its predators are, but the fact that it wraps its tail around itself in what seems to be a defensive manner suggests some predators, and the fact that it still does have a semi-shell which offers a bit of protection. There are plenty of things that could eat it in the Bornean rainforest, from lizards to birds of paradise. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, if you'd like to see more from us.